Okay, we've been hitting some eight, iron, eight irons for you guys, Monsanto guys. You understand the grip. You understand how it affects the face. You understand what parallel lines are. You understand the uh, uh, line of scrimmage standing over that, club face and perpendicular line of scrimmage. Your body comes in parallel. That's kind of your setup rules. Everything flows off the setup. You make a mistake there, you're going to have mistakes in your swing. So everything flows off the setup. And remember, you have to understand that you have to take the face and understand what hitting something is. This is called hitting. If I do that to a ball, that's what happens. So you have to, your hands have to understand that. So if you're standing over your, your big black golf ball and you're trying to hit it like this, you're going to have trouble. So we've got to make certain that our wrists are wrists, our fingers are the screws that keep the hinges to the door, our arms are relaxed, and we understand how to obviously hinge our wrist and hit the ball. Now I'm going to do that same identical motion with an 8 iron. There's my little tire. And now I hit the ball. Same feel. Obviously my club moved through because the ball got light. But most people, when I place their hands up against this tire, my hands onto theirs, and I go like that, they're never used to it. They don't even look for it. They never feel it. And they never get the idea what it takes or the feel to do that, to taste that impact part. You can do that. But if you're going to be a pounder, now people say, should I pound or should I swing? I said, once you can pound, start swinging. But if you can't pound, you can't swing because you don't know what it's like to hit something. So if you're thinking you're going to go around impact and in your mind that you're going to go through impact, pushing this thing and not doing that, you're in trouble. Okay, so get that, guys. Monsanto guys, you got it. Let me ask you something, John. Yes. What about weight shift? Okay, Is there so any weight shift? Uh, well, let's say we're going to do a little weight shift deal. A lot of questions about how much the weight should shift. I am now going to take my little cylinder, my tire checker. Okay, like I've mentioned many times, solid contact, teaching some of that with a golf ball and a club is pretty tough to do. You've got to upscale everything. I'm going to hit this, let's say, 50%. Now I'm going to hit it, and you're going to know what my body does, okay? 75%. Now, did you see what naturally happens with my weight distribution? Am I going to lean in? Am I going to, that would make sense. There's a natural shifting when you know what you're doing at impact, naturally, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and work on my turn. I know what I'm trying to do. My weight goes. Now, after impact, the ball gets light. And then, obviously, my body follows the speed. And I end up with something more like that. Okay, do it again. I'm moving to the right, and then I move to the left. So once I know what it's like to hit that thing in there, my body responds to impact versus just make it some sort of position that magically happens, okay? Keeps me in business. Some okay, people say that you should have your left shoulder to your chin. I mean, does that, is that something you... Left shoulder, chin. If I'm just going to hit this thing real hard, Okay, and I know what I'm doing. My left shoulder goes to my chin. If I'm gonna blast this thing and I say, that's not power. It's, it's, it's natural when you're, I'm gonna make a wind up to really blast this thing, my body moves the way it needs to. So when you get some bad advice over the ball, head down, arm straight, and don't bend your wrists, and wondering why you're not getting into this spot that you can really fire it into, this is what keeps me in business. Stiff arms, stiff wrists, head down, now I'm looking at, what am I looking at here when I'm hitting this? What do you think I'm looking at? The back of it. So my eyes then swivel to the back of it. Because I'm hitting it right there. But the poor golfer, big, this is big golf ball obviously, will sit there and stare in the middle of this thing, wondering why they're chopping down. So you have to understand, once you're, you're trying to move behind something, to hit behind something. So it's pretty common sense when you get that part of it. So when we go on a little weight distribution thing, so we want again better chipping, pitching, 8 iron, 5 iron, get into the 5, it's much more 50-50 balanced, okay, 50-50. We're not in the choppy, not in the too sweepy yet. Then we go into what? Driver motion, okay? Now we're going. Let me stop you once, Jeff. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about hitting down on the ball. Uh, maybe you want to hit some shots because, and what causes topping? 
because I think you know a lot of these guys top. Do you want to, or do you not want to get into? No, that? no, whatever. Okay, we can, I think you, you with can, the irons, man. You can you, know? you can edit, so we. Yeah, it makes no difference. It's a good question. So, because I, you know, when you had that acrylic uh, thing, well, that's what it's here, right? and I got one. I yeah. got one at home. It's wonderful. Yeah, because you can really start smashing. So I'm going to go one, two, three. When people top golf balls, there's a couple of reasons, but specifically with the shorter irons. I'll pull over an eight iron here. Yeah, eight. And I'm trying to hit the ball and then the ground in that order. Okay, ball and ground. See, that has to happen, ball and then ground. Now, a lot of people are just struggling at golf. They, when they do hit down, they hit the ground first. And if you're going to teach someone to hit the ground first, then they get tired of hitting the ground first, but then they start what? Oh shit. Okay, I'll stop again. Got that stopped? 